Next speaker is <laughs> Dr. Eugene Georgiatis from Ministry for Primary Industries in New Zealand. Uh, he's a senior advisor for the Biosecurity Risk Analysis Team. Uh, we invited him a couple of years ago and we were thoroughly impressed so we invited him back. I'm second uh, choice. Second choice. Choice, second choice, the first guy didn't come. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but, I guarantee you, you'll learn something, maybe a few things, um, but you definitely will be thoroughly, thoroughly amused and entertained. Right, I'm going to go over this side because this is clearly my best side. We're going to be pretty close. <laughs> Good mates. Why am I wearing sunglasses? Is this about Brangelina breaking up? And <laughs> is love lost in the world? Is, do we actually have anything to hope for? <laughs> or is it because we've got an hour left in the symposium, I've got half a pack of cigarettes, it's dark, and I'm wearing sunglasses? Hit it. <laughs> in water cleaning, how do we know it works? Uh, first of all, I've got to thank my co-conspirators, Abe and Dan. They've got to put up with me on a daily basis. You guys, I've got half an hour. Um, I'd also like to thank um, Chris and Nicole, um, they're truly the, the wind beneath my wings, so thanks for inviting me, it's, uh, it's good to be here. What am I going to talk about today? Um, relatively painless regulatory update, um, Sonia's got the painful one coming up, um, so stay tuned for that. I'm um, going to give you a bit of background into the Australian New Zealand in Water Cleaning Guidelines. Uh, then talk about what we're doing in the ministry within water cleaning and uh, a little bit of a, a slide about what we're currently doing just with respect to biofound research as well. Right, so we've heard about uh, a few stories this morning about uh, clean, uh, ships running uh, clean and, and you know efficient and, and things like that and, and that's great but the reality of the situation, sometimes not so great. These, these are pictures of vessels that have come into New Zealand within the last 18 months. So while the majority do run clean, there are some, um, I like to call them the remedial class of vessel. And, and why are we even bothering managing by failing? Well, I mean, there is a bit of conjecture lately where people are just saying, oh, look, you know, it's only affecting ports and man-made structures. Why are we even bothering? Well, like, here's a couple of examples from New Zealand. This guy, Paiura, found it right at the top of the North Island. There are no real man-made structures up there. And it's basically growing in the in the tidal, basically overtaking anything. Uh, see this guy up here? This is the sea star I did my PhD on. It's awesome. Um, this here is uh, the Pacific Oyster. It came in to New Zealand in the 1960s. Uh, again, by a pathway, and it's basically, it's taken over all the intertidal uh, mud flats in the, the North Island in New Zealand, and taken over from the, um, the, the native uh, oyster species as well. So what you get is a, is a reef building species in your intertidal mud flats. So it's basically changed the whole ecosystem, and it silts up um, those ecosystems as well, and they're pretty unpleasant to walk on too. This down here is on Darien. Oh, no, it's supposed to be a mussel farm, actually. Um, but this came into New Zealand again, vessel biofouling, late 80s, throughout both the North and the South Island, even to the point where it's um, uh, getting near to the, uh, our World Heritage Parks at the bottom of the South Island, spending a lot of time and money, like, hand-picking uh, stuff to keep it out of there. It's, yeah, a shame. And, I mean, if these don't just make you want to lose your hair as I have um, and you need a light bulb moment with respect to non-indigenous species. This is nature's slimy light bulb, Eudostoma, and again finding it in both natural and artificial substrates in the North Island as well. So that's, that's an ascidian and it is, it's, nature's a cruel beast. So where are we with uh, regulation? Uh, we signed off uh, the first, Chris, the first um, biofouling regulations in 2014. We had a four year early adoption period, so that's where we allow the shipping industry and the, like our standard actually covers all vessels, anything with an immersed surface, so recreational vessels, rigs, gas, commercial vessels as well. So 
So this four year early adoption period was to basically make sure that they could get their biofilm management plans up to speed. So May 2018 is the date, the target date for implementation to um, begin proper. Look, there are thresholds within the standard where ships have to meet. Um, they're where the rubber hits the road, but ideally what we're after is follow best practice. And IMO guidelines are best practice at the moment. So that's all we're asking, just buy a fouling record book, management plan, make sure you're running within your in-service period. And, and Australia's going the same route, California's asking the same thing as well. So we're all aligned and hopefully we get a lot of industry uptake. This is all about risk minimization. If you want to eliminate the risk, no more shipping. Easy, problem solved. We don't need to be here. No more in water cleaning problems. Sorry, Roger, you're out of a job. Um, but if you want to continue shipping, and you, this is the way to do it. Risk minimization, best practices. For further details, check these documents out. This is what we where we want to be. 2018, we're talking, we're communicating. The shippers know what we're doing. But there's a lot to do for implementation. For example, what are we doing about in water cleaning? In the international context, IMO guidelines came out in 2011. They're talking about in water cleaning in terms of routine maintenance. So cleaning the slime layer, less biocides into the environment, less biosecurity risk. We're promoting that. That's that's you know where we want to be with in water cleaning, but. What do we need to do as well? There's obviously some remedial vessels still coming into the border, so we need, we need an action plan for those vessels because we don't have a lot of dry docking in New Zealand. A small country. What else? In the domestic context, in water cleaning is going to help us there in terms of the spread of both um, non-indigenous species that have already settled in New Zealand and, and also um, diseases of biofouling as well. So protecting our aquaculture industries and, and our world heritage areas as well. So again, routine maintenance is what we're trying to promote and taking on a pathway management approach too. So trying to um, pre prevent the pathway rather than look at individual species. Right? We've found that that hasn't worked. So where have we been within water cleaning research? Well, we sort of really started looking at it in 2008, but um, we've uh, produced a fair body of work in the, in the last couple of years, and I'll be talking about these particular studies today. All of these are publicly available, except for this one. This one will come out mid next year, depending on whether the author wants to keep procreating. Um, but just uh, with respect to Australia, New Zealand and water cleaning guidelines, Bit of background here, uh, the, the two governments got together in 1997. There were concerns about the release of biocides, particularly tributyl tin, which is particularly nasty, changes the sex of uh, mollusks. And then because at that time there was no recapture technology as well, so it was like, well, you're just gonna spread non-indigenous species, you're just dumping them in the port. So, that's what those, uh, those guidelines said. I, I'm not sure whether I've been subtle enough there. Um, we'll see. More crickets. <laughs> but uh, 2009, the code was reviewed. And this was basically because TBT got banned. Um, and there was uh, technology development with uh, fouling release paints. And also there were technology developments in terms of some of the in-water cleaning technology as well. Um, so Australia and New Zealand got together together again and 